Today is 72 years. I'm lucky I'm here. Otherwise, I could be together with, with my lovely mother, with my brother. If I wouldn't run away, I couldn't be able to explain to you even what happened 72 years ago. With my voice, my memories, five camps, two ghettos, and I am here. You, you, you see what happened here? It's, it's a unique opportunity. We have such a huge privilege to be talking to a survivor. We realize that there's only so much longer that you can hear them firsthand in their stories. You're not just learning about someone on a screen, someone in Schindler's List. You're living and breathing history through him, and it's special. In the 5th of November, 1943. Dobbs making history every time he does this by you know, touching the lives of young people and saying, look, this is something that was so barbaric yet so recent. And there's Holocaust denial and there are people who are, who are forgetting about it or trying to spin the numbers. And he's here to stand up for that. What a leader, what a, what a mensch, what, what an incredible person that he's able to do that. So I will start now to go with you. אז עכשיו לעת זקנתו אני ממשיך לאהוב את הבריות. אני אוהב את הבריות, לא משנה מי. אני אצלי ואהבת לרעך כמוך, זה בדמי. I made an edda that Hosman Anishama Bekirbi, I want to give my testimony to the young people from the schools that they should know about this Holocaust, what happened. And this gives me more strength to live, and this gives me a lot of 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 Tam, Tam Lechaim. When I was in Auschwitz, when I was in Buchenwald, I've seen my, my death across my eyes. I only was begging God that he should help. And I believe from that time up to now, I will not, I will not forget, you know. On your left hand side, where you have arrived at the death camp of Belzec. This is what it was, just what you see, size of a couple of football fields, and this will be the place that will put to death 600,000 of your brothers and sisters and grandparents and parents. My old town, all the Jews from my town have been... We're going to be getting off the bus here, okay? This is the monuments, the stones, you know, for every town, you know, for every people. But... Oh. For the 600,000 people, so uh, as a memory, you know, what happened here. This is the place where my uh, old people from my town, you know, uh, around 4,000 people have been brought to this camp and have been murdered, you know, by the gas camera. It was on the 18th of June, 1942. I was only 14 years old. This day, the Germans asked from the Judenrat to give him, you know, about 250,000 zloty and about 20 household goods to arrange them the houses for the, the Gestapo that they should that have been in my town, Bzesko. My father was one of the rep representatives from the Judenrat and he, he went to hand over this old stuff. I, I have been home with my mother, with my brother. Mother said, I'm going to cook for you food for, the, for Shabbat and to cake the chalice, and uh, there was missing something. So she sent me to the drugstore, and then when I came up, I have seen that uh, all the, the Jewish square in this town has been round, surrounded with the Gestapo. They came out with the, with the trucks, you know, and uh, went into every house of the Jews. So I was thinking what, what to do, to go up to my mother and to bring it. This was what she asked me to bring, but uh, I was very worried, so I ran away. On the way, you know, they shoot after me, 
but uh, I got a, a pull between my legs. By four o'clock, everything has been quiet. I came home and I was looking at mother, she's home, and father and my, and my brother. I didn't find nobody, you know. They've been brought here to this camp. No, I've been left by myself with my father. Every layer can bet more, you know. You lose a mother, you know, the first time in your life. You are old, only 14 years. You lose a brother, Naftuli, you know. He was lying in the bed, he's, he's got a cold. So they took him together with the mother and uh, together with other thousand people here to this place. You heard from Dov that he understood that the, uh, the trains had come here. And when they come on these train tracks, they're stuffed in like cattle. Inside the train carriage is 135 people. 15 survived the journey. 120 will die of suffocation. People are very naive. They have no idea where they're heading to. They arrive here to this town, this camp of Belzec, and there's a man who's running this camp. His name is Worth. Worth stands up outside of the train station and tells the people, you know, you've come here as a transit camp. You're going to be going on. We need to know what your professions are. Who are you? Even housewives, he says, will have positions to be able to continue. And you know what people do? They applaud. They clap their hands. And they say, thank you, Mr. Commander. Because they have no idea what they're about to enter into. Once the people are undressed, they're then going to be led to this pathway that we're about to enter into. What's at the end? This is the place where the, the people, where they came with the trains. They used to, to take them you know, over there to the gas camera. Thousands of people have been brought every, every day during one year, 40, 1942. In 43, they destroyed this, this camp already. Today is 72 years. I'm lucky that I stay here. Otherwise, I could be together with, with my lovely mother, with my brother. If I wouldn't run away, I wonder that I am alive and I love. Otherwise, I, I couldn't be able to explain to you even what happened 72 years ago. Yeah, you, you see what happened here. I could be here. Let's follow Dov together. We're going to actually walk everyone straight ahead this way. How do I shame? Now I'm going to say Isko for the whole family, my, together with my mother and with my brother that have been brought here. Isko lik doshe brigil bjesko here for my town. El male rachami mishoche hein bamromi hamitze menucha nechona et nishmot. אבותינו, אמותינו, אחינו ואחיותינו, בני קהילת בריגל בז'סקו וסביבותיה, שנהרגו בידי הצוררים הגרמנים ועוזריהם, יימח שמם. והקדושים ינוחו בשלום על משכבם, ונאמר אמן. with all the people and all the beautiful communities that surround this place over here. 600,000 people snuffed out. Double the size of Anglo Jury, gone. Disappeared. It's very rare to stand here with a survivor. It's very rare to stand here with a man standing in front of us who wants to spread so much love because of so much hatred that is behind us.
Yehi zecham baruch, may the memory be blessed. May you know b'sorot tovot. Shiyu melitzei yosher, lano v'lekol am Yisrael. On the left hand side, Bochenska. This is the, one of the streets out, out to Bochnia. I, I used to, to walk here around. Okay, we're going to be getting off the bus stop over here. Okay, uh, this is the main square. It's called the Target Market where we're standing in. What Dobbs is going to show us, his house. Also, where you went to school. A, a Talmud Torah. Okay. Talmud Torah. So he's going to show us all these types of things over here. And then uh, hopefully you're going to get a whole picture of what life was like. One of the things that we lost in the Holocaust, in the Shoah, was not just the people, but we lost the chain, the inner beauty of what Jewish life was like in a village, which is no longer here today. Okay, so please try and gather that when he speaks here of what it was like here, the beauty of life here. All right, I have been born here in 1928. They have been my parents. Abba Ben Yumin Landau, Ima Scheindl Landau. The target market, you know, the place where I used to go for my mother sent me to, to buy uh, eggs and the cheese and the, and the chickens or, or gooses, you know. I'm very, very excited now. I don't know what to start to, 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 to tell you about because the day when I ran away from here, about a thousand people have been taken and, and, and put here in, the, in this target market and put them on the trucks. And all of them, my mom and my brother, has been taken to, to the camp of Bozhets. So I will start now to go with you and I will continue to explain you what it was over there, okay? So please, you stay up and, and come with me. This was a synagogue, you know, one of the nicest synagogues has been left after the war. Is it still a synagogue now? No, it's rented, rented by somebody, you know. This is only one better Knesset, on, on sh one shul from all the for other shuls that have been is, is spoiled and uh, destroyed and burned. You know. How many shuls stood in Pshesko? Uh, in Pshesko in in have been one, two, three, four, four shuls and about ten Stiebloch. Four shows and ten. You know what Stiebel is, guys? Because uh, okay. because the, 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 the Jews the Jews in this town the, the Jews in this town have been eighty percent of Jews, eighty percent of Orthodox Orthodox Hasidim Hasid eighty percent. Okay. And the other twenty percent have been tolerant tolerantish. Misorati uh, Misorati. <laughs> this is here the corner. You have the Talmud Torah. Also, you know, it's a Jewish school. The Jew, a Jewish school, you know, Talmud Torah. No, it's not a cheder. It's, it's more than a cheder. It's, it's a Jewish school here. In the cheder, I will show you where I've been in my in, in the cheder when I was when I was about seven. No, later, you know, by 10, 11 years, there's a cheder where I've been learning here and another another a chaser. Another courtyard. Huh? Courtyard. Court. Courtyard. Can hear chaser. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look inside, you know. This was the place where in the in this windows, you know, in the back. This has been a header for my Rebbe, you know, oh. when I was a kid, you know, ten years, eleven years old. She's I used to ass. I used to learn here with a Rebbe, you know, Srul Manis. His name was Srul Manis. A nice man, you know, he he loved me, you know, too, because I was a good kid, you know, he said <laughs> You know, I, I know that they, I am in love, you know, with everybody since I've been a good kid. Yeah, let off Yerushalayim. I knew all the all the neighbors here. Nobody has been left besides me. Can you tell us some of the names? Huh? Names. Family uh, Landau, Moshe David Landau, and Mishpachat Kholi, Blogund. And uh, you know a lot of a lot of names. You know, and at this moment I'm I'm not able even to 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 remember the, exactly the names because I'm very excited. You know. <laughs> so please, we're going further up. 
having him here and going to his town and that five minute walk was his journey like through his life. It was so beautiful to see that this town like still has such a connection to him and like such negative feelings that he should have towards this country and towards that town and towards everything he's been through. All he wanted to do was share happy memories with us. To bring us there and show us even to the small details, like that's yeah. where he was running and being shot at and, and how but, he vividly but, but, remembers. Yeah, he vividly remembers it and he had such a, a big smile on his face. He's, he's so appreciative and he's so joyful to life and that's an inspiration. Listen, we are, we are going to cross now to the, to the center of the town, like Piccadilly, Piccadilly Center, you know. Yeah, we're going to use the, the crossing, okay? Yeah, crossing. we have to cross here. Okay. Uh, the traffic will wait, you know. Yeah, of course. The cars are waiting. They know that I'm coming here with people from England, so they are waiting to get us. <laughs> this was the Jewish square in the town, you know. The red, the red house, this was my home, where I've been born. In the right hand side, my grandpa, Leibich Landau, has got a textile, textile store, you know, here in the front of this, of this house downstairs. In the left hand side, the, the yellow one, you know, with the balcony, this house is uh, my grandpa's house. Here I was playing, I used to work in the, in the, in the garden, you know. Before the first action in uh, 1942, I took the jewelry from my mom. I took the, the jewelry from the subtype and I buried it in, in the basement of our house here in this building. In 2012, Dov went on a journey with his family to visit the place he was born and tell them the story of his past.
after the war, I was coming here, but I couldn't do nothing. But uh, there was a, a sister of my father. She survived in, uh, in Russia with her husband, with two kids. In 1945, they came, they came back to Krakow. So I wrote out a, a piece of uh, skits, you know, and I explained exactly where I did it. They went in and they found one of the pieces from my, from my mom's jewelry. It was a, a, a diamond ring. So this, this ring she brought me to Israel in 1949 when she came. And with this ring, I got, I, I got married my wife, Shoshana, in 1952. When I uh, asked her hand to, to be married, so I told her before, you, listen, I have a, a nice present for you and I want you to give it when we will be married. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> It was actually a heartwarming moment to see where he used to live, to see where his grandparents used to live, and his story about him burying the, the, the jewellery of his parents and his grandparents and then finding it again. That was just incredible. It must be difficult going back to where his family grew up and yet he's walking down the street where his bakery was on the right and his shawl was on the left and he's, and he's smiling and he's proud and he's lifting that arm with the number with immense pride and infecting us with that. I was in the past four years, and I saw that the smiles of all the families were one. That gave me a lot of courage. When I see the smiles of the smiles, I love them like my children, like my friends. My grandparents are no longer alive, but being around Dov, he's such a grandfatherly figure. And I asked him, why do you do this? And he said, well, when I was forced to work in coal mines and in concentration camps, and when I was faced with, with certain death, um, I persevered and I can, I can never think about current youth, current Jewish youth going through something like that. Um, so he lifted up his leg and he shook his foot and he said, I can still dance with anybody and I'm here to walk along with you and to dance with you to show you what I went through. <laughs> We've got songs for him, he's singing, he's loving it, he, he wears his Ray-Bans and his hat and he looks like the coolest guy ever. I'm going back now with more power to Israel because Paradity is a, is a mit'an yashan mi'alef sheli v'sha'afti, ech amrim, mit'an chadash, ruach chayim chadasha, im harbe simcha. אנחנו יש לנו את כברת דרך מחר לבקר במחנה ההשמדה באושוויץ, איפה ששם באתי בגיל 15. אתה לא, אתה לא נותר לך מה הוא כותב, מנגלה. אני אקריא לכם את הרפורט על יד הקרון. הגעתי פה לפני 30 שנה, וואו. פעם ראשונה. וואו, ואיך היה בשבילך לראות את, את המקום הזה עוד הפעם? עכשיו לא עצוב? גם עכשיו עצוב, מה? אמרו לי לפני איזה מחנה שהייתי, I have to wear myself, you know, and to look like a man that he should take me for the work. So I, I took whatever I could. I was working in a sandlaria in the, in the camp that I had been before. So I took magafayim. 
So we came now to the place they call it in Germany, this place, the Rampa. We have been 4,237 people. We arrived here on, on a Saturday night. It was very cold. November was very cold here. It was about uh, 200 people in one wagon. Like Sardinian, he was Sardinian, you know. It's him. Everybody was scared. They told us you go for vacation from the camp. What kind of vacation? So we, 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 we are going all day, you know, by, by, the, by the trains? Vacation? They kick us out from these wagons, you know, like dogs. They was yelling on us, Fazout the Juden. They came about the 20 soldiers SS with the, with the carabines, <coughs> with dogs. Schnell, schnell. We're supposed to leave all our suitcases on the, on the rampa here. Nobody knew what it is, why, why we arrived here. Mengele, he was the man that he, he made us the Kabbalat Panim with the right paiche, you know, with the... His baton. Yes. And he was starting to, to yell on us, go down schnell and leave all the packages, you know, on the rampa. 4,500 people, you know, it's a, it's a lot. And he started to make a selection, right and left. I, I was staying with my father together. So he, for me, he said, go to the right. For, for my father, he said, go to the other hand side, you know, to the left. So my father said, he was, uh, he see that his son, 15 years old, 15 and a half, I've been, I've been sent it by the, by, by Mengele to the right. So he, he, he was wondering why, why, why he sent me to the left with the old people and the women with the kids. He made a turn back behind the train and he came, he was staying with me together on the, on the right hand side. Mengele has looking somebody, he went up behind him, you know, to the left, to the right. So he came to, to see who, who was the man. He took somebody else by his hair and he slapped him to the left hand side. I have this document taken out from the archive in Auschwitz. Mengele is giving a report to the headquarters over there. So he said on the 5th of November 1943, I have got here a transport with 4,237 people, Jewish people, men and women and children. They arrived from a camp under the name of Shebnia. Nach die Selektion wurden 952 Männer. They made the, the numbers on the arms. One of these numbers I have got on my arm. Die übrigen 2,889 Menschen wurden in the gas camera getated. The rest, you know, of 2,898 people have been walking to the crematorium and murdered, you know, by the gas, gas camera. Nine hundred and fifty two two uh, boys and men. We came into a, one of the of the barracks here on the in the back and we supposed to take out our clothes. Without nothing, you know, we ran to other place to, to get a disinfection. And then after the disinfection we went into a barrack, you know, with the showers. It, it takes about few hours until everybody has got a shower, you know. But the time that I have been waiting with my father in this bedroom, you know, I have, I, we hear so many crying and, and uh, yelalot, vebechi, unbelievable. So from 2,886 people, they brought them in here to this building. And later, after the shower, they put them into the gas, a, a, a gas room. They uh, been murdered by the gas. 
and fell down to the carriages, you know, with the Zondo commander. They put him out from here and to be burned in, a, in, a other, in another place, you know, to be burned over there. Okay, so what happened with me? When I was finished with the shower, I was supposed to, to run, you know, without towels, without nothing. It was cold in November, you know, very cold. So we went into another barrack. There we got the new clothes, you know, the trousers with the jacket, with the hat. Now we went in to be located in the, in the barrack number 10. This was the, the first step, you know, a new a shikun, a new shikun. Okay, so now I'm here with you. After 70 years, well, 71 years, I was lucky that they, that they didn't take me to this crematorium here. Also, people, the 2,886 fathers and mothers and kids have been murdered in this crematorium and, and, and taken out to, 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 to burn them. It, it took all night, Friday night, 6th, 5th, 5th of November, 1943. This is the first place where I've been located after I came into this camp in the 5th of November, 19. 43. So we, they brought us here to this, to this block. And you can imagine I have, have been lying with my father on one of this bridge upstairs, not down. I've got one blanket in the back and the other blanket on the top. No pillow, nothing. I was lucky. And they took me out here from, from this block, you know, after three weeks to other camp, 13 kilometers from here. But in, during the three weeks in this place, we have to take you know, stones about two kilometers from one side and to bring the, the rocks you know, to the other, other hand side on, the, on, the, on this camp. You know. I, I remember I took a small rock in my hand, so I've got a Schmitz with a, a, with a right patch you know, on my hands. And he told me, leave this here and take another heavy, heavier one. I was only 15 years old. So I couldn't take a big, a big rock either. My father took, so he, he was standing together with me. The moment that we brought the, the rocks to the gate, to the end of this camp, you know, to the, uh, up to the gate. Over there, they have been staying already 200 other people, and they take the same, the same rocks and they put them back to this place where I, where we pick up on the, on the other hand side. Avodat Parech. They told us, you know, you build a, a, a highway, you know. No highway. It's a gate here. In the front there was an electric gate with dogs, with, 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 uh, with SS, you know, with the machine guns. They are Pachat Mavet. Pachat Mavet, they are. Pachat Mavet, if you know what's Pachat Mavet. Scared. We have been very scared. I, I, I'm not able today, after 71 years, to explain you exactly how we suffer here. Noon time, we have got, you know, a liter of soup. Everybody has got a dysentery from this soup, you know. So what, what are you doing? You need to go to very, very quick to the toilet. You come down 10 or 20 people here on the, on the door from this uh, barrack, and you're waiting until the other 20 will come back. And, uh, and, we, and they took another 20 to the toilets. I wish I will show you the toilet, what kind of a toilet it was. Here in Birkenau, because of the disease called dysentery, and the capos knew they had to get so many people in here, person was sitting down on the toilet, all of a sudden he get a baton over his head. Where do you think you are, in a spa? Get out of here! And they kick him off in the middle. But he's got dysentery. So now what do you do? You can't hold yourself. Your now uniform is soiled. So what do you do? You go and ask for a new uniform? No, you can't do that in Birkenau. Please, sir, can I go to the toilet? You already heard you can't go to the toilet. You'll go to the toilet when they tell you to go to the toilet. And the capos 
who wanted to make sure that many of them could stay in that position, that elite position of being a capo. The idea that they get more food. You have to prove that you can be more cruel than the next person. So they would drown their victim in human waste and drop it in. This is Birkenau. This is a world of hafuch al hafuch, a topsy-turvy world. Whatever you think you are looking at, you are not looking at Birkenau. If you think you're just looking at a bed when you were just in there, you are not just looking at a bed. If you think you're just looking at a toilet, you are not just looking at a toilet. Everything in Birkenau is a clean of it, is a vessel to be able to kill somebody. The idea that you keep your selim enosh, your image of who you are, the idea of being a human being. So what do you do? Human being. Okay, you had to wash your um, cutlery and your bowl. Well, your bowl, not your cutlery. Your bowl in the same water that was being washed for the toilets. People did whatever they could in order to stay human. Otherwise, you had lost the will to live. And he became Muslim. There was only one stage next for him. And that was either to the gas chambers or, as survivors tell you, if they still had courage left inside of them, courage, they use the word, they would chuck themselves in the face. Do you understand where you are? Because I wanted you to make it extremely clear now. If you think you understand it, you do not. And when you go home tonight, and you arrive back in Auschwitz, or back at home in your different places, wherever it may be, and you tell your parents and your friends and everything else, I went to Auschwitz, you remember one thing, you were never ever there. Myself and Michael have been here many times. We have no idea what it means to be standing next to this man. Because even though he's only here for three weeks, we have no clue what it means to be in here for 30 seconds. What it means to be covered in waste from head to toe, to walk and just to do whatever you can to be able to survive the day, the day. His father was a rabbi. His father was a rabbi. Unbelievable. A very, very dignified man. And when he sees his father as part of the Shai's commander, his first instinct is to yell out, Daddy! Abba, but when he sees what his father looks like, total degradation, the loss of the dignity that, that he once had, <coughs> he stifled himself. One day, you know, they asked 200 people to get out from here to another place, you know. I don't know, we didn't know where, where, where to. So I, I said for my father, please father, let, let us go out from this place, you know, because it's something tremendous, you know. Not possible to live here in a, in a block like this. So I, I went down from this, from this bridges here on the front of the door to get the other 200 people. There have been cars outside that took us with the car to another other place behind Auschwitz, Birkenau, 13 kilometers from here, in a place where I have to work in a coal mine. 350 meters in the, in, under the earth, every day. I was the youngster boy in this camp in Yavishavitz, just with 2,000 people. A few of them only have been survived. I was one, in, one year and in three months over there in Yavishevitz. My father was 39. He used to work together with me in the coal mines. He was working at night shift and I was working in the day shift. My father, he, he didn't, uh, he, he was not survived with me because he was sick. He couldn't work in the coal mines. His legs had been swollen. I, I was, I was well, you know. I could have uh, help because the guy that I was working with him in the coal mines, he brought me every day two pieces of bread 
with uh, with uh, sausage or with something, uh, some uh, meat, and I was drinking with him every day. You know the the tea or the coffee from his thermos in the mines, 350 meters every day. I walked two kilometers from the camp to the uh, elevators that uh, brought us to to the mines. As the Soviet Red Army advanced on occupied Poland, the SS marched nearly 60,000 prisoners out of Auschwitz camps to remove evidence and exhaust the prisoners. Those too weak to continue were shot and left along the way. Almost half of the prisoners on the march died of hunger, exhaustion and the freezing weather. 17 of January 1945, I went with a dead march. We arrived to Buchenwald on 22nd of, of January. After five days, three days we have been going like dopes, you know, without eating, without sleeping, without water. The goyim, they used to, to, to throw us uh, bread. So I got the bread in my hand. I was able to get a, a bread. What I did with this bread, for every, every boy, every man that he, he was behind me, I gave him a piece of a bread. He couldn't swallow it. So I gave him, <laughs> I, give, I, I, I told him, you know, take, take a little bit snow. With the snow you will slow it. There was no water, nothing. Only with the snow he, he, he swallowed the, this piece of bread. I've, got, I've been strong, I've been strong. I've got shoe. I've got a, a coat, and I went through the three days with the two, two days going by train up to Buchenwald. On the, on the, uh, the wagon that I went to Buchenwald, we have been lying like sardine, 130, 140 people. When I arrived to Buchenwald on my wagon, I supposed to take down 13 Haverim. They have been frozen on the way. We have been going by the train to Buchenwald one day, all day. 13 from our people have been frozen. So I have to schlep them down, to put them in the cages, and to, put him in, to bring him in to the, to the crematorium and to, to burn them. He, the, the assessment, he gave me with, his, with, the, with, the, with the gun, you know, take them down, you know, schnell. Schnell, schnell. I love to live. I want to live for another 20 years. I want to live for another 30 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 years. Last year I've been here with, with my group, you know, 18 uh, kids with the uh, ankles, with the uh, grandchild. I was sitting like with you. So one of my ankles in Israel, he wrote for me, for his grandfather. It was a song. Abba. Thank <laughs> הוא שלח לנו את השיר והילדים למדו את זה במשך השבוע והם עכשיו ישירו לך את השיר הזה כולם זה המילים יש לך משקפיים? זה בביצוע שנפתח, עוד רגע תשמע אותו. נפתח. 
תודה ליפתח שלא נמצא פה. זה משהו גדול, משהו גדול. זה משהו גדול, I want to add you, if a grandchild like my one, 31 years old, he see that I'm happy because I build up a new family. For my old family, I've been here murdered in, in Poland, you know. I've been only one in life. In Baruch Hashem, I married, I got a new family, I've been... 59 years married with my wife, she left already three years ago. And we built together 59 people. And I, believe me, I wish you all, you all my lovely girls and lovely boys, and also, you know, the no? The team that works with you. The team, you know, what is going with me. I wish you the same. And it's a shame if you get married, but only with with Jewish girls, you know, you boys, I, I tell you the truth. My father told me before he went out that I should be, he, he will not see me anymore. But he said to me, I Please, please, stay Jew. And I'm, I'm doing this what he asked for me. So that's why I, I wish you the same. You have to take an example from a man like me that I passed here 71 years ago.
יש לי uh, תכונה כזאת שאני עובר מהר מאוד מיגון לשמחה. זאת התכונה ש... שאני יכול אחר כך להמשיך להיות אדם נורמלי, אדם רגיל, מתפקד, <coughs> מלמד, אוהב את הבריות. He's got an energy and a, and a real strength within him that is inspiring to us all. And I think that everyone has noticed how through this darkness he's developed a real strength. And passing that strength on to us is, is important and is special and is why we're here. So I thank him for that. So with, with okay, the head up, with, with your head up, speaking with and seeing the emotion and the the life and the love that that Dav shares uh, is unrivaled I will I will never forget it uh, be well see you in Tel Aviv but if you get a, a girlfriend you, you come to me okay. and show me if she's all right I will give you a, a okay <laughs> permission <laughs> thank you thank you so much שאבו ממני קצת עידוד, אז זה הוסיף הרבה נופח לכל המסע הזה. אז אתה, איך אומרים, זה היה מסע מיוחד.